All right, so I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 10. It seems to be out of Starting in verse 1, it says, And you have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had in our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature of children, the children of rash, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath ordained that we should walk in them. So the title of my devotional is Salvation is a Gift. Um, salvation is a gift, and um, it's kind of hard to understand that sometimes. Uh, us humans, we have a problem. We always want to think better of ourselves than we do of other people. And uh, it's called pride, and what keeps us from accepting Christ as our Savior and admitting what we're a sinner, because we're proud. But now that we're saved, the problem appears in a different form. It's a sneakier form. Uh, it's a holier form. You see, now that we have admitted we are a sinner and have accepted Christ, the devil tempts us from another angle. Now he wants us to think that we're better than unsaved people. And that we are righteous and they are not. The truth is that you are the same sinner that you were before you were saved, if you haven't noticed. God has made you righteous through Jesus' death. That means he doesn't see your sins because they are covered by the blood. And 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made unto be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And Romans 5, 19 through 21 says, that, uh, For by, as one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So you're the same sinner you were before, but um, God doesn't see it because it's covered by Jesus' blood. So my first point is God's gift is for everyone. Um, Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So salvation is not just for you, it's for everyone. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 3-6 says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and, all, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And... Romans 5.18 says, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. And John 12.46-47 says, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For it came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And 1 John 2, 2 says, And he is the propitiation for our sins, but not for ours only, also for the sins of the whole world. There's nothing that you have in Christ that an unsaved person can't have. There's nothing that you've done that makes you better than an unsaved person, and there's nothing that you've earned that makes you better than an unsaved person. An unsaved person can have all the same stuff that you have, um, eternal life and a walk with Christ. Um, but what's the point of all this? You can't truly help someone if you're looking down on them. You can't, um, you can't explain them the way of salvation if they think that you are um, above them. No one's going to want to be saved if you're looking down on them from some spiritual platform. If you're going to be an effective witness, you have to understand salvation is a gift for everyone. 
Um, which brings me to my next point. God's gift was given to you. Our main passage says in verse 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We can never earn salvation if uh, um, we didn't do anything to become saved, but the devil still made just to trick us into thinking we're better than other people. The only difference between you and an unsaved person is that they haven't accepted the free gift. If you think of other unsaved, if you think of unsaved people as less than you, they will notice and will show them your attitude, and they're not going to want to hear what you have to say. First John 5:11 says, "And this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God." Salvation was free to you. If God charged you for salvation, you'd be paying it for you'd be paying for it forever. If God gave you salvation, He can give it to anyone just as easily. If you act like you did something to be saved, unsaved people will notice it even if you can't. You might think, Well, I'm saved, and they're sinners. Well, you're a sinner too, and God ignores it. So you should probably ignore the fact that they are sinners and start witnessing. Which brings us to our last point. Number three, God's gift is yours to share. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 5 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto into them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and our sons and sons are servants for Jesus' sake. Uh, Mark 16, 15 says, go ye, all into the, go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Um, how are you going to even want to share the gospel with someone that you think is below you? You have to go to their level and admit you're a sinner a second time and show them that we're all in the same boat and that we need forgiveness to escape the punishment we deserve. Acts 8 says this, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither unto him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And then verse 35 says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Christ Jesus is the Son of God. So in order for us to be an effective witness for Christ, we need to ask God for the wisdom to share the gospel in love and show them the gift that is theirs for the asking. That's what witnessing is. It's showing them the gift that is sitting in front of them. All they have to do is open it. All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, thank you for all the people that are here this afternoon, and thank you for this time. I pray that we would uh, you give us all wisdom to be the best witnesses that we can be. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we're going to close with number 420, bringing in the sheaves.